Hello and welcome back to Mikey's Flytech. Today you can see me use this CNC router for the first time. I have announced this in the last video. First of all, I want to give you a look inside the electronic of this machine so you can get a sense of how everything should be connected to each other. I know this must look a little bit messy to you now, but I will try to make this clear so you can imagine what is going on inside here. First of all, we have the power supply here at the right and the power is given to the three motor controller cards by the blue and brown wires that come out here, go in here and go to the three motor controller cards. On the left side there are three white cables arriving and these are the cables from the stepper motors and they are connected to the motor controller cards with these plugs here. The motor controller cards can be jumpered to different settings with these little uh, switches here on the red bar and they are set to 1 8 steps which are called uh, micro steps and to a power supply of 2.5 amperes for the motors. And finally the cables of these three plugs here lead to the three inputs of the controller card which will give the commands for the stepper motors. Which cable goes exactly in which input depends on your stepper motor controller cards and your controller card here and so I can't get into details of this settings. The controller card is connected to the Estelcom interface here and here you have the USB cable which is lead out of the CNC and into my computer. I have to connect the two other wires to the Estelcam interface here to ground and to another sensor input. And, and these are these two wires here. And these two wires can act as a sensor when I'm using a tool length probe or a touch plate for example. If you want to control a CNC machine, you need a software that can send the commands to the controller board. There are many different softwares on the market and for me, as an absolute beginner of this whole CNC topic, I was searching for a program that doesn't overwhelm me with too much setup options and lets me easily create my first toolpath. And I want to show you the software that meets my requirements. It is called Estelcam and you can download a full working copy for free for testing it with your CNC where the only limitations are some waiting pop-up windows. So let's have a look into the software and the settings that are needed to control my CNC. To set up the CNC in Estelcam I go to the setup menu and go to CNC controller. First of all, you have to choose the controller hardware you have connected. In my case, this is the Astrocam interface. If you are using another hardware, then you can choose it from the list here. The steps per revolution are set to 1600 steps. And this is because my stepper motor makes 200 steps per revolution and I've set in my stepper motor controller card the micro steps to 1 8 and this results in these 1600 steps. The distance per revolution is set to 5 mm and this depends on the pitch of your threaded rod you are using. The other values I've left unchanged. Instead of the x-axis reversion which I've marked here. On the Inputs tab, you can choose which pins are connected to the limit switches or to any sensors. On the Homing tab, 
I've inserted the maximum traveling distances of my CNC. When you have done all these settings, you go back to the basic settings tab and click on program controller. Then the Arduino on the interface card is flashed and you can use the CNC with these settings. Now I wanted to test my CNC with a little drawing job. And for this, I've downloaded a DXF file from the internet. And you can import this file via file, open, and then choose your DXF file. You have to set the length unit of your file. In my case, this is millimeters. There are a lot of different tools to create your workpiece and I want to introduce the different tools short to you. First of all, you have the selection tool and you can select your tool paths, move your file, rotate, flip or mirror it, or if you want to make many copies of a part, then you can tile it, for example, then we have the part tool. With this tool, you can cut out your work piece out of the material. All the tools have an automatic and a manual mode. We will come to this later here. The holes tool will cut a hole into your material. So we would cut a horse lined hole into a material in this case. With the engraving tool, you follow the lines of the DXF files and you can choose to follow the line directly or on the left or the right side of the line. With the carving tool and the special carving bits for your CNC, you can make different carvings into the material. You have a special tool for drilling holes and you can even drill a threaded holes into your material. With a text tool, you can enter any text you want and engrave it into the material and even let the text follow a line, for example. And you can set the zero point to any point you want on the surface here. For my first testing with a pen, I want to simulate a cutout process and so I will use the part tool. The automatic mode is activated and I can go with a mouse over the line. It is highlighted and I can click to select it. But this doesn't work for this horse. You can see there is a little arrow here in the DXF file. And so we have to choose the pass manually. We select the manual mode. And I will start here near the arrow. And when I slide over the line, the green highlighting indicates that the path is recognized automatically. I can do a right click here. With a mouse wheel, I zoom in a little bit to see the points. And with the left mouse button, I select this line here, or maybe this with the right first, then with the left mouse button this. And at the end, with the right mouse button, I close the pass. And the pass is completed. The thickness of the tool doesn't matter for this test because I'm using a pen. When you are using a real router bit, you can choose your diameter here from a list or enter it. And that's all for the beginning. The horse is ready to be painted and I can export it and save it as a CNC program. The program asks me how deep I want to engrave this. And because I only want to paint it, I will say 0.1 millimeter. Now we're entering a simulation where you can see and control how your tool pass is going. But that looks okay.
because I was afraid of using the CNC with a rear spindle for the first time, I made this round piece of MDF, which has a width of 43 millimeter, and this fits exactly into my spindle holder. I made a hole into it so I could clamp a pencil into and made a cutout here so that the pencil will be hold in place when I close the spindle holder. Then you start your CNC controller and to show the machine where the limits are, you will do a homing first with this button. I have to zero the Z height so that it meets the surface of the paper. And now it's time. I'm pushing the button for the first time. Let's see what comes out. So maybe you can imagine my reaction when I saw this for the first time. But because this is a serious channel, my reaction was something like... Yes, uh, that should be. Let's go on. So, beside all this happiness about this first result, there are some critical points in this drawing which we should go through in detail. The CNC started at this point and moved the pen over to this starting point here. And the pen made a scratching sound while he moved over the paper and this is because the pen was pressed very hard to the surface which could uh, come from the z-axis uh, inserts in the program. But when the pen moved into this area here the scratching stops and you can see the line was lighter with every movement into this direction here up until uh, here where there are only very thin drawings. And I think this is the result of a misalignment and it comes from when the CNC moves to this direction here the pen is lower here and when it comes over to this area here the pen is higher. So this can have many different reasons. First reason could be the HDF surface I've screwed onto the Y carriage here isn't really leveled and flat. It can be a little bit wobbling anywhere but I don't know if it would have this result here. The other reason could be a misalignment of the Y carriage itself, that it is diagonal 
like this into this box here. And the last reason could be a misalignment of the x-axis that it is approximately like going like this here. And I think this could be the most realistic reason for this. So what can I do against this? I could try to level this x-axis about a quarter millimeter or something like this and I don't know this would uh, work out here. So I think I could come out with a, a simple solution and I've seen many people flattening their surface with a big router bit. So I think I will change this sacrificial layer here with a thicker one and the first thing I will do with the sacrificial layer is that I will insert a flattening router bit or a very thick router bit into the CNC and then move over the whole surface with the same setting in the Z direction. And so it will level the surface to the orientation of the X axis, I think. But now I want to make my first parts for the CNC and want to show you the workflow you can use to create your tool paths. I want to route a dust collection for the CNC and I'm opening the DXF file that comes with the Solidus plants. They are made in millimeter units. And I will route this part with a three millimeter router bit. So I have marked this one here in the toolbox. These are the two parts I will cut out from the plate. So these are parts and I will use a part tool and try the automatic mode. And this works. I will cut it from a six millimeter plate. And so I will say it has to go seven millimeters deep. Same with this part here. To prevent the parts from sliding away when they are cut out, I will add some holding tabs. And so I will use this tool here and let's say a holding pattern here and here. And the other one here and here. And so the parts will be hold in the material until I can take it away from the working surface. Now there will be some holes to cut out. One hole will be this here and this here and this one. The other part here will only be routed four millimeters deep. And so I will use again the hole tool, but you can see there is again an error in the DXF file. So I will have to define this manually. This part can be done with a right click automatically. And then I will have to go on here with the left mouse button and here I can use the right mouse button again, here again, and the last points I was set here. So we have defined the shape and now I will say that this should only be four millimeters deep. But I don't only want to cut out the outline of this hole, I want to remove all the material inside here. And this can be done with a pocket. So I activate pocket. I think I switch to the parallel mode. 
And now the CNC will remove all the material inside here with these paths. Now I can set an order in which all the parts should be cut out and I want the outlines here to be cut out at last. And so I can select all the passes and activate the machining order. It automatically inserts a 10. Now I say the hose will be done. It gets a 20, 30, 40, and then the two outlines. You will have to add this pocket here, of course, on top. Now I will set the zero point and I will place this here. And now you're ready to go. Save it as a CNC program and you can send it to the router. Because I don't have any clamps for the working surface, I fixed the part with some double-sided tape. On an unused surface, this holds really well. After installing the dust collection, I can cut out the missing clamp accessories nearly dust free. And with this, I'm able to hold the work pieces in place. So here we are at the end of this Solida CNC series. If you have followed the steps in all the previous videos and with a little bit of studying the instructions, you should be able to build your own CNC without any big problems. Thanks to Christian Knill for sponsoring this video with a free license of Estelcam. You should visit the website. You can download a full working copy of Astelchem for testing it with your CNC. And now I'm very excited what parts I can produce for the simulator with this CNC. Let's get back to some simulator work again, which will take place in the upcoming videos. And if you haven't done already, then subscribe to my channel to stay informed about any upcoming new video from me. So I hope we will see us soon back on the Flytech.